everybody. How's it going? And welcome back to Hank's Think Tank. Got Mark Hogan here with me. Got Alan Perry. Alan is the owner of Mac Daddy's Cigars and Gun Shop mm -hmm. um, in Porter, Texas. And uh, so today we're going to talk about the AR-15 platform. We're going to talk about gun rights, gun ownership, responsible gun ownership. We're going to touch on whatever we can. So welcome back. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and check out our other videos. We've got a bunch of them out there and we're doing good. Before we kick off today's discussion, however, I need to make special note of something that's come up that's pretty important. And so I want to go ahead and take care of it real quick here. Today is Mark Hogan's birthday. And I wanted to make sure in a and celebrate it real quick there's so, a reason i didn't mention that man i didn't want all that attention <laughs> send your gifts to the uh, address that will be on the trailer <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah we'll superimpose that so before you open the gift i want you to read this card and this card is from everybody at studio one three so happy birthday mark sometimes there's just no way to express the feelings in the heart that's from jackie right that's, that can't be from you it's from both of us it's a check for five dollars. <laughs> Sympathy and understanding <laughs> <laughs> are with you. Happy birthday, Hank and Jackie. Yeah, now read the in internal note. That's the important part. This man. is important. That's, uh, that's, it's that's all that's important, important, man. You don't turn 60 every day. There you go. 60? From Hank, Jackie, and all the gang at Studio 13. That includes the dogs. It does. They're my friends, yeah. too. We want to thank you for your dedicated hours of faithful service <laughs> and to wish you a very special birthday. All right. Every hour has been uh, uh, just way too much fun for this old guy. Hey, you what. put in almost like 20 now, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's been big. Actually, we this is my 13th episode here helping you out. Really? Is it really? Yep. I counted them Damn. up the other, the other day. 13. Yep. That's pretty good. So the, it's been way too much fun. We stole you. I mean, we bought you a gift. <laughs> I don't care where it came from. Love <laughs> is mine. That's not bullets. No, I told you not. I wanted ammo. All right, we're gonna a tab A7. There you go. And we're, I'm fixing to find out what that is. It's like an iPad. It's Galaxy's version of the iPad. No kidding. Yeah. Android? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. my phone's on Android. Yeah, right on. I figured you'd be kind of used to its operation already and uh, figure it out. So, yeah, it's all Google driven and all that shit. And you can get on if you can open it. Can you get your money back? Because I can't open it. You can get it. on wireless networks and, and all that. Here. All right, Alan. So, uh, I know you brought with you a, a gun today, and, and Mark got a couple. I'm going to be honest with the group to start out with. I'm. You know, this is probably one of those things that I'm not real um, intelligent on. I haven't done a whole lot of research. At one point, I had an AK that was real nice, but I ended up trading it for a radio, of all things. But, hey, you do what you do. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to talk today, you know, and, and we were chatting just a few minutes ago about the new um, Second Amendment carry that I think is going to pass here in Texas. At least from what I've been told, it's on Governor Abbott's desk and just waiting one more signature. And I think it goes into effect in September. In September 1st. So uh, let's talk about that a little bit. And, you know, because you shed some light on a couple of things that I was unaware of. I thought it would just be like having a regular concealed carry license as long as you weren't a convicted felon or you weren't a nut sack or you didn't have uh, any warrants against you or something like right. that. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? But, right. I, you know, it, I was I found it kind of important. That was a good information that you were telling me about before. So why don't you share it with me again, just so I got it straight. Well, I'm not a, like I told you before, I'm not a real big fan of that, yeah. only because of the stipulations that are, are that have been put into effect with the law. Um, and a lot of people aren't clear on what the actual law is gonna be and what it says, because there's some that have taken the time to go read it. Yeah. Um, I've kind of been a little bit lazy and I'm letting my attorneys tell me what I can tell. Yeah, have you ever tried to read a house bill before? Right, it's amazing. Exactly. I mean, it's exactly. Like but pages. Some of, of the things yeah. that I do know and that I understand that uh, the original versions of the bill, if they had passed, would have been wonderful. Would have been great. Uh, but the new versions, the amended versions that the the House or I should say the Texas Senate 
that's of course a Republican Senate uh, refused. They wouldn't sign the other ones. Uh, they accepted this final one, but it has a lot of stipulations in it that a lot of people don't realize. Everybody's getting all hoo ha happy that they're getting this. Well, I and, was too. Yeah, and it's it's not what you think it's going to be. Okay, uh, sure, you don't have to have a permit uh, as long as you're not a felon or or had you know criminal history or something like that with a, a domestic violence misdemeanor type stuff. As long as you can own a gun. You can carry in the state of Texas, okay, after September, not until, uh, without a permit. As long as you can legally own that gun. As long gun. as you can legally own the gun. And does the gun have it. to be registered in your name? There is no such thing as a registry in the state of Texas. Okay. Uh, the feds are working on a national registry, although they're lying to tell you they're not. They are. They're constantly trying to build one. Sure. Uh, but as of right now, the only registers that they are are certain states, California, you know, New York, places mm -hmm. like that. They are the ones that have the, the registries for the state, but okay. not for the country. Uh, so as of right now, state of Texas, you can sell a gun to your neighbor or anybody uh, that you want to, and you don't have to have a piece of paper, nothing. Uh, I don't recommend that because if that gun gets used in a crime down the street, now you're involved. You're going to be, right. you know, having to say where you were at what certain time of the day and this and that. And so um, that that can cause you a big problem. So you always need to go through the, make sure you're not selling it to somebody that's not a felon. Because if you do and they prove you knew he was a felon, and he goes out and uses a crime now, you're going to jail. Right. Uh, same thing happened in El Paso, the Walmart yeah. shooting. The guy sold the, the kid the gun, knew he was crazy. Well, now that guy's in some serious trouble. Right. Uh, yeah. I think he's going to be seeing some jail time out of it. Wow, that brings me up to – I'm wondering if any of these videos can prove that I'm crazy. This thing said, man, he can't have a gun. Have you seen any of his podcast videos? <laughs> That'll suck, so – Oh, I may, You're not have already, crazy. I may have already incriminated myself. Yeah. <laughs> Hand so, me all your weapons. Yeah. But on the uh, the Texas uh, bill here, where we're that we're talking about the there's a lot of stipulations. For one, you can't go to another state. It's only it's legal in Texas. So you go to Louisiana, don't run over there without a permit because they recognize Texas permit. Right. So you yeah, go into there's, a, there's a lot of states that recognize the Texas right. Can, I think there's 34. Can still carry, yes. yeah. It's uh, huge. So we're, and we're they're gaining there. all the time. Yeah. They're all we're go. always gaining Good some. Um, but you have to have you can't carry outside the state for one. There you can't carry in a hospital. There's a lot of places you you will not be able to carry that you can carry if you have the license permit. Without the permit, you can't carry in a church unless you are on a security team for the okay. church. Uh, you can't carry in hospitals. You can't carry, of course, your normal places, any kind of sporting events type stuff like that. So I'd say 90% of the commercial facilities you won't be able to carry in. And I would think it'd be normal like that anyway. Right. Now, you, you know. go. You can carry in a church without a per, with a permit. Yeah. But you can't without. I mean, so there's, there's a lot of stipulations. There's a lot of things you're going to be able to do with the permit that mm -hmm. you will not be able to do with the without the permit right and right. as we were That's discussing earlier the signage on the doors okay mm -hmm. um we call it uh, what i call it a uh, tra uh losing my thought a the, the uh 3006 well the 30 out six and the 30 out seven right. are the normal for licensed people okay, right that have a carry permit and will they apply also trespass to trespass uh protection is trespass what i was, trying, was, what okay, I was yeah. talking about and what it is is you see a little Ghostbuster sign on the door with a with a gun on it with the red line through it? Yeah, it's about two inches by two inches. It's stuck down here in the very bottom corner of the door where nobody can see it. Right, except for your dog. It right. Yeah. If you go in and you have a permit, they have to ask you to leave. If they notice you have a gun on you, they have to ask you to leave. There's no penalties. No, they can't do anything to you unless you refuse to leave at that point now you can be in some serious trouble then you've uh, right. committed a crime right exactly with just, just by being there with the gun well right. by not leaving when they ask you to okay right now with out a permit 
you walk into that establishment, they don't have to tell you anything. They just pick up the phone, call the cops. They show up. Where's your permit? Well, I don't have one. Put your hands behind you. Yeah. I think everybody okay, so has got the uh, the idea that this does away with even needing a permit. But now we're seeing some a uh, big differences yeah. right here. Right. So There's, I have another question. So with a with a concealed carry license, you can conceal a weapon on mm-hmm. you. What about this new? Um, Second Amendment carry. Can you conceal? Or conceal or open, open either one. Conceal or open either mm-hmm. one. Okay. It's it's wow. just you know you you can have the gun in your car. You can have it you know right. uh, anywhere as long as you're in the state of Texas and not violating a law. Yeah. Another one we were talking about was uh, with a permit, and a lot of people don't realize this, but with a permit you can go in a school parking lot. You can go on the school sidewalk. Uh, the only thing you you cannot have a gun and walk into the building. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I can ha- have a gun in the in the school zone. I can have it in my car and have it on me and on the sidewalk. Just can't have it inside the building. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Without a permit, with this new permitless carry, a federal law kicks in, which is you can't have a gun in a school zone. Right. So if you drive. It's the guns in your car, and you don't have a permit, and you get stopped for speeding in the school zone. Guess what? You're going to prison because you got a gun in a school zone. Now, that's a federal. That's a felony. That's right. that's a federal law. So that supersedes the uh, the law they came out with that said you can carry in your car as part of your castle. With a perm, well, yes. You don't need a permit. Just have it in so your that, vehicle. It, right. That falls now, under the castle doctrine. Yeah. Huh. Yep. So, yeah. Okay. See, like a lot of people don't realize too. An 18-year-old can have a gun in a car. You don't have to be well, 21 I could, to own Yeah, I knew you could have one in your car. Right. My daughter could have one in her car. She's 19. She can have one in her car right. anywhere she goes uh, as long as it stays in her car. Now, she can't exit the vehicle with the gun. Mm-hmm. Uh, if she shoots somebody, she has to do it while she's sitting in a car. Yeah. Um, and, and have but a, that's, uh, that's out the window if you drive through a school zone? Well, the feds doesn't really specify with their law. It's just no guns in a school zone. So that was taken away. I, I, I don't know how they did it, but the state, if you have a permit, you can be in a school zone because it's stupid. People drive through a school zone all the time with guns in their car. So it's not really something that's ever been enforced, yeah. I think, is what the deal is. And now they're kind of like, well, but it's there so they can, it. It's there so they can know if, if they, they want, want to do it. it to. I yeah. don't like gray areas right. in this I had an ATF thing. agent tell me one time, we're not going after some little bitty, tiny little things. That's when you screw up big. That's when we're going to we're gonna shotgun you with everything we can find, every oh, little yeah. thing we can find, and you and the judge can sort it out. That's kind of the way I think they're going to do it, something yeah. like yeah. that. But it's, um, it's, it's sad that people are under the misconception that – they're going to be able to do all this stuff they think they can do, and it's not its not going to happen. I mean, it's not that way. It's, it's a lot of restrictions to this new law that yeah. is going to get a lot of people put in jail because they don't know. Hmm. You know, I'm really kind of surprised that in today's environment that something like this would even get passed. I know. When you hear about all the mass shootings and everything that's right. going on, you, the, it seems like the last thing you would want is a heavily, openly armed society that of people who haven't been vetted. You know, right? If you got people who've been vetted, that's a different story right. altogether. But when you just start saying, "Hey, as long as you can legally purchase a gun, you can carry mm-hmm. it anywhere you want," it's going to be a problem. Well, but here's the other thing that I don't think a lot of people realize: once this thing gets passed, you're going to have a big spike of people carrying. But over a period of time, that's going to trickle right back down, and we'll probably be about where we are now with people who carry. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little less. It's hard to right. tell. But I think at first we'll have a big spike, and like you say, I think a lot of people end up going to jail and having legal problems. Right. But and once that news gets out, that's what's going to get everybody right. else to start dropping now off. Now there's a possibility in two years they can go back and re- and revisit those the new law and make some changes and stuff like that. Uh, it's highly unlikely as long as we have the Republicans in the Senate that we have in there now. Yeah. They're not going to pass anything that, that they're not gun-friendly by no means. Um it's, I don't know. It's crazy. It's it's, of course, the world's crazy anymore anyway. But yeah, it really is. I'm all for anybody being able to own a gun if you can buy it and own it. You ought to be able to carry it. Sure. I don't think you should have to have a permit to carry. Uh, I do think that's our constitutional right. However, 
if you're not supposed to have a gun, and the people say, oh, well, everybody's going to be carrying... People that don't supposed to have guns are carrying anyway. You bet. Right. Really the law ain't stopping them. Yeah, they you don't know? care about the law. So all yeah. you're doing is stopping good people from being able to protect themselves. Yeah, right. or scaring exactly. them into thinking that they can't protect themselves, mm-hmm. and, and and that's wrong. That's just straight up wrong. If you can own a gun, I, that's why I have no problem. A lot of my customers are like, well, this stop and frisk, or if you got a gun and they can tell you got a gun, they are they can be able to just without probable cause that. Well, first of all, if you're not hiding anything, mm-hmm. why are you worried about it? Right. You know, I have no problems. If a cop sees me. I wear open carry a lot of times, especially at work. If I have to leave work and go to lunch somewhere with somebody, I, my gun's on my side, open open view. Mm-hmm. I run to Home Depot, try to supply something like that for parts or materials or something. I got my gun on me. Have you ever had a cop ask I, you for your I've permit? never had a cop ask me. I've had a uh, Walmart uh, and another reason, one of the reasons why I don't shop there anymore. But I had a uh, person uh, from Walmart ask me one time if I had a permit. I told him to call the cops mm-hmm. uh, that I wasn't showing him anything. He didn't have to see. He wasn't legally. Right. Uh, I didn't right. legally have to show him anything. He doesn't have the right. authority to exactly check that. Um, so, of course, he didn't call the cops. Now, I've had more <clears throat> people, civilian people, ask me about it or. Yeah freak out over it i've had some just literally freak out really oh it, it's it's crazy uh what? i had one i had a guy we were in i was in lowe's one day i had to run up there and get some cleaning materials came back or i was at the cash register and this guy's standing behind me and there's a couple behind him and he's just like literally going in circles going oh my god oh my god oh my god you know and i'm looking at him like what the hell's wrong with this guy so i asked cash <laughs> cashier i was like what is his problem? And she goes, I think it's your gun. Wow. And and I looked at him and I was like, man, what's wrong with you? You know, are you are you sick? Something? What's going on? And he goes, oh, it's just that gun, man. It's, it's oh, my God, it's just scaring me to death. I said, well, you think it's going to just jump out of the holster and run around the store? And start the dude's folks? having an emotional breakdown. He, literally. Yeah. Literally, he was. Wow. I, of course, I just told him, I said, well, sir, all I can tell you is you need to grow a pair of balls. Yeah. And you know this gun ain't gonna jump up and run around and start shooting people it's the person you need to be scared right. of not the gun right and of course the couple behind him was just laughing laughing at him he was acting a fool he was really a, a fool yeah and then i had a guy ask me at uh, a store one time right after open carry passed and he just kind of looked kept watching me and he finally he said Does that make you feel safer i was like excuse me you know, I don't even know you. Why? What? Your, that gun, that gun on your side, does that make you feel safer? I s- well, you know, I tell you the truth. Well, it would make me feel safer if you'd mind your own business <laughs> and leave me alone. You know? Yeah. Uh, I, I said, you're an idiot. You know, I don't even know why you want to confront somebody with a question like that that's wearing a gun. Right. I mean, come on, man. Well, he's going to go home and he's going to tell all those buddies, I, I got yeah. in that gun nuts yeah. face and you yeah. should have seen him. And yeah. So, yeah, I have more, and, and so when I'm out with my family, I conceal carry. I generally only open carry if it's during the day when I'm at work. I'm not going to go take my gun off and all that to go to yeah. a store just because I don't want to freak somebody out. But if I've got my wife and daughter with me, my family with me, I don't I don't want to cause any more commotion than, right. than I already, do, <laughs> already right. do anyway. And so I, I choose to conceal carry in those situations. But I'm a firm believer in both open and concealed carry. Uh, a lot of my customers, when we were having this debate in the beginning, what you know, I don't want to open carry. Everybody thought it was going to be the gunfight at the OK Corral. Well, they said yeah. that 30 you know. years ago. Right. And you it know, never Blood happened. in the streets. That oh, was yeah. their catchphrase, yeah. too. And so it never happened. You very seldom ever see anybody open carry. And every now and then you do, uh, but very seldom. Mainly the police. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, it's it. Um, I believe you should be able to carry any way you want to. Right. Um, and I believe you shouldn't have to have a permit to do it. However, I do believe you need training. Yeah, for, absolutely. For sure. Right. You yeah. know, um, I, I think believe any, any, any responsible gun owner needs to be familiar with his weapon. Exactly. Uh, and not just once a year at the range, man. Right. 
You right. get all kind of stuff. There are though. people that buy guns and load it and put it in their car or carry it and never right. shot, never have shot it, never don't know how to pull it apart, don't right. know how to clean it, don't know how to, right. you know. When the adrenaline gets pumping, they're lucky to find it at that point. Right. Yeah. And those are the ones who accidentally shoot themselves, too. Yeah. Or, or yeah. shoot. Or shoot somebody, somebody else. else, like a yeah, because they're not a, looking behind their target. Deal not too yeah. long ago, where a guy was uh, behind uh, a guy that was robbing a convenience store, and we and, and when we do, I help a friend of mine do concealed carry classes, and one of the things that I tell them, don't be a hero. If you're in the back of the store, and it's getting robbed, unless they're shooting folks, stay in the back of the store. Right. You know, yeah. don't be a hero. Right. Because that's going to get you or somebody else killed, possibly. And and it is one situation. The guy pulls out the gun, starts shooting at the guy, misses the robber altogether, and kills the clerk. Right. Uh, Very important to know what your backstop exactly, is. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and people don't think about that when that situation hits. They're in panic mode. Pucker factor is yeah. what I call it. And yeah. it's like... Uh, they forget to take the safety off the gun or you know there's a million things that can go wrong when you're in that situation and if you're not trained enough to know how to operate in that situation right. then you don't need to be the less you can right. actually think about it consciously and just react to what you need to do right. and that just takes repetition yep and uh, I know there's a whole lot especially for after last year um, and br- brand new gun owners mm-hmm. and you've seen them oh yeah and a lot of them are women and it doesn't matter what sex they are, but you're a brand new gun owner, and uh, maybe they're out of most things, but you find this little pistol here, and it, you know you, you, they're, they're settling for something that may not be quite optimal if they have a chance to really check out a whole lot of right. different stuff. And it's like you said, they these bullets fit in there, okay? They they load it up and they said, I'm safe now, yeah, till the time comes. Hopefully that time never comes, but this is what this all is, all preparation. A guy asked me one time, said, uh, well, what are you afraid of? Well, there's all kind of bad in the world, but um, I'm not afraid of much. I feel a little safer with that. At least I can defend myself, Mm -hmm. you know. And why do you have a fire extinguisher in your house? What are you afraid of, you know? Exactly. It's preparation. Yep. Exactly. And it's, uh, like you said, there's a lot of new gun owners out there mm-hmm. and we've seen them uh, at the store during obama era you know we had the same thing we couldn't keep guns in the store we sell them as fast as we could ammo was ammo was the same way yeah but those buyers were already gun owners the majority of them, not all of them i would say 90 percent were already gun owners they were just afraid it's fixing to go away i'm gonna buy everything Stock i can up, yeah. before it happens guns ammo everything this round with biden's crap is it's a whole new uh buyer i would say 80 percent of our buyers now are first-time gun owners 80 percent. i would say 80 percent are first-time gun owners never undergone owned a gun in their life and you know and i ask them so and that's how i know because i ask them i feel them out all the time i ask questions all the time before i sell somebody a gun and one of them is, is this for your person at home? What, how are you going to carry it? Or, you know, because we want to fit that person with the right gun. I don't sure. want to put a 1911 in a, a, a 21 year old female's hands that weighs right. about 50. He has know? never shot a gun. Right. Yeah, right. So it, it's, we fit them, try to fit them with the proper gun that I think would best work for them and how they're going to use it. And I tell you, most of them are first-time buyers, never have shot a gun before in their life. And I, I strictly tell them, look, you have got to go. We give them cards to instructors that we have at the shop there that, that we re- mm-hmm. uh, recommend all the time. And, uh, you know, look, please, please go get a class. Have one of these guys do this for you right? so that you're familiar with the gun, you know. And I tell them, I'll take you in the back. I'll show you how to tear the gun apart. I'll show you how to clean it. You know, I, I'll teach you the basics right. on the gun, so at least you know how to clear a jam if you had to. Right. That 10 minutes in the back, they're not going to remember. No. You know, they have to go, and I tell them all the time, you have to go to the range, you have to practice, you have to shoot. You know, and there's a range that I recommend, and I tell them all the time, there's guys there that will help you. They'll actually get out there and help you with the right. gun if you tell them. If you got to ask. You know, if yeah, you, I hung out with an instructor for a while, and he said, if you're not shooting 500 rounds of ammo a year through your yeah. carry gun, 
you're not shooting at all. Right. You know. Right. And the police aren't even, they don't even shoot that much. Right. So I was surprised to find out, because I hang well, out with a lot of cops, and I was surprised to find out what their minimum requirements are. Oh, it's yeah. practically nothing. Yeah. 50 Twice. rounds a year. Yeah. You know, yeah. a year. I know. For a cop. Mm -hmm. Really. But how often do they have to pull their weapon? Almost <clears throat> never. Well, it depends let, on well, which one nowadays, they're pulling. <laughs> right. If they're pulling their taser, it's right. all the time. Right. right. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. It, but you can miss with the taser and be all right. Yeah. You know? Well, a lot of people don't understand this, too, is, you know, these guys come in and they want, well, I want all these different sights. I want all, you know, is this a carry gun? Yeah. This is going to be my carry gun. Okay. Well, first of all, you don't ever want to use grandpa's gun or any kind of sentimental gun. Only carry a gun to protect yourself with that you're willing to lose. <clears throat> right. Because if you ever have to use it, you'll never it. get that gun back. Right. The odds of you getting that gun back are almost never. Yeah. And so I just tell everybody, don't use, for, first of all, don't use grandpa's gun. Don't use anything you're not willing to lose. Right. Also yeah, remember that I tell people, they think I'm crazy, they look at me when I'm crazy when I tell them this, but it's, you don't need sights on a carry gun. 90%, 99% of concealed quarters, carry yeah. shootings happen in less than five foot. Yeah, yeah. They're going to be on top of you before you even have a chance to pull that gun. That's right. Just and so, at the poker table. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Or at the gas pump. That's uh, but then again, there are times where you may have to shoot at a distance in your house, for mm -hmm. say. Uh, that's a whole <clears> different ball game. You're out in the street, out in you know, the parking lot at a grocery store or something, and you shoot somebody 30, 40 foot away, now how are you going to prove to the judge you're in fear for your life? Right. If you're that far away, you can probably remove yourself from the situation. Exactly. exactly. So I just tell everybody, don't, you know, it's like don't shoot till you see the whites of their eyes. You know, it, it's yeah. if you're going to do it, it's most of the time it's going to be right on top of you. It's going to be less than five foot. So this is a great time because of what just got said with that 30 foot example to talk about the AR platform. So if, if you get a hand a handgun for close quarters combat, let's say, then where does that AR come into play? What would it be used for? And, and why are people so fearful of, of what they consider to be assault weapons? I'm not, you know, I'm, here's my, here's my take on it. And I don't want to be the kind of guy that sits on the fence and is afraid to say what he really feels, right. especially online or whatever. So I'm going to say it. I would want an assault rifle because I fear what our forefathers feared. And that's a rogue government that can't be controlled th by any other means. And that are coming after you. Exactly. And you want to be able to at least match you know, what their abilities are. And that's are. exactly and why not, a lot of people on the sure. other side will try to frame that as a, a hunting right. You know, right. you don't need 30 rounds to hunt deer. Well, number one, you don't tell me what I need. It doesn't right. matter what I need. And if I just want to go target shooting, mm -hmm. and I don't want to change my magazine every 10 rounds, I want to do it every 30 rounds, that's my business, and it ain't going to hurt you. Right. But, but I also believe that the fact that Americans, by nature, are so armed to the hilt, that is A, kept our government in check, and B, kept us from being attacked by our enemies north, south, east, and west. Right. Mm -hmm. Because they know they'd have to clear us house by house, It'd be a hundred years. I've got war. a friend that told me, he said, well, you know? the government's got tanks. Well, guess what? They don't have enough damn tanks. They, not not to it. clear got, every house. You know? And they're going to run out of fuel sooner or later. That's exactly right. Right. And so <clears throat> that's my take on it is I would want to have armament like that for that sole purpose and that purpose only. And the AR, it's, it's I've, everything I've read, and I know, know you know more than I do, but everything I've read and... Uh, and seen and studied about the AR platform is excellent for home defense. It's sure. short, reliable, easy to run in the dark if you had to. I mean, you were talking about what, 30 inches maybe on the yeah. typical, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and there's a lot of firepower there. The ammo's Great not for too home heavy. defense, yeah. yeah. Better than a shotgun. Right. I mean, well, a shotgun. Now, now you got the pistols. <clears throat> The AR pistols, that AR platform, right. but in a pistol version. So Can we take a look at that? Absolutely. Yeah, let's, why don't you show it up for the camera and let's let everybody take a look at that mean looking damn thing. <laughs> this is a 7.62 by 3.9 AR pistol. Oh, that's Instead awesome. of the conventional 5.56 five, round, this shoots a 30 caliber round. It's a 7.62 by 3.9. Yeah. Um, and that's considered a pistol because that of its is considered length? a pistol because it is the barrel is shorter uh -huh. than 16 inches, 
and it's this is an arm brace okay. on a stock. Right. So that is what, and it's under 26 inches. That's Man. what makes it a right. classified as a handgun. Yeah. Uh, versus and it's mean life. looking as hell too. It yeah. is. I call it yeah. the looter shooter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, they're fantastic guns to a point. I'm not one for hunting with an AR platform. I'm on, I'm like you. Uh, I own a few, mm -hmm. and you know, the I hunt with none of them. Right. Uh, I'm a conventional. I'm either hunting with a shotgun. <laughs> A lever gun or a bolt gun, and everything I shoot, thirty caliber or bigger. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I don't like chasing animals. I want them to drop right where I shoot them. Right. And, and so, the misconception about the bullet size for oh, an yeah, AR. Yeah. The typical yeah, bullet. Let's, let's talk about them bullets. And Mark, just go ahead and show them. The up big so badass carry. AR bullet that you hear about on the news is right here. And that's that's a two twenty three. Correct. That's a two twenty three comparable five, to the six. five five six. Yeah. They're almost interchangeable. You couldn't tell the difference by looking at a distance. Same round. And I'd say total length on that's maybe what two and a quarter inches, maybe a little longer. Total length is uh, exactly two and an eighth, uh, I would say, right about there. Hey, damn, I was almost Got on it. the money. Yeah, that's pretty good, Hank. <laughs> yeah, not bad. And if you look at the bullet, there's the casing and the bullet. The bullet is the part, the projectile that leaves. It. I don't know if you can see that. But at 223, it's as wide as a 22. Okay? There's your big badass bullet. There's the casing full of powder. As a comparable thing, a common deer round and uh, military round used to be was 30 out 6. That's a 30 out 6. And that's about three and a quarter inches long, I would say. Oh, something like that. But yeah, so it's, it's, it's a, a much, lot bigger much bullet. Larger. And the, the projectile diameter is a lot Right, a lot too. more powder. Yeah. Here's your comparison. The so-called weapon of war, 223, 5.56, five, and a 30 six standard 30 caliber round. And Alan, do they make, a, do they make an AR platform that'll hold a big bullet like that? Or? I've seen one that was in 30 out six. Wow. Uh, they make them for, uh, we build them all, all, all the time for uh, the Creedmoor, 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, I've seen one in a 243, but most of the AR platforms go to a 6.5 Creedmoor or yeah. a 308. Yeah, yeah. I love the 308 round yeah. just for hunting. And yeah. those they consider what they call an AR 10 because uh, it's the bigger caliber gun. Okay. So it shoots uh, the bigger round, it's, and the magazine wells are wider to accommodate the bigger bullet. Right. And, uh, but with the 5.56 five, platform, there's several uh, ammunitions that you can shoot. Right. Like the uh, 76239, which is the AK 47 round. Uh, use the same everything except for the barrel and the bolt mm -hmm. face. So you can build an AR 15, change the barrel to a 762, and change your bolt face to fit a 762. And, you have an AR-15 that shoots a 7.62.39 mm -hmm. caliber. And yeah. that's what's really popular about these guns, as far as I can see, is they're so interchangeable. You can build them and customize them. You can put lights. And that's why I think they're so popular. Yeah. Uh, is because there's two guns. And they're, that, they're mean looking. I mean, they look at them. Well, they're, yeah. They're yeah. badass. And, and I think that's what scares people. Uh, they look well, like they, they, they look like a war machine. You know? Well, they really I, do. An AR-15 and a Ruger 10.22. Mm-hmm rifle are the two most accessorized guns in the world everybody's got to accessorize you buy yeah, a new no, truck you got to get mud flaps you got to get new a bed oh, yeah. ladder you got to get same thing with a gun i got to have this i got to have i've seen people customers bring guns in that I, they there wasn't room to put something else on the gun right and it weighs a ton you know not real hey, practical. It's not but practical at it. all. But right. they like it. And I tell her, say, I'm not a big laser fan. I'm not a flashlight fan. But if that makes you feel more comfortable, then by all means do it. Right. You know. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's the same. It's, there's so much that they can do without taking it to a gunsmith. There's so many accessories that they can buy and install themselves. Because they come with these rails. You know what the rails is. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. every, and those are standard size. You can attach anything that he's talking about right. to the rail. Right. 
Yeah, right. bipods and all that kind Change of stuff. Change stocks right. to different kind of things. Yeah, it's, uh, it just, uh, you know, they like you said, like that, like to make it their own mm-hmm. special thing that they did themselves. Right. And the, the scary thing that you're talking about is uh, a narrative that's been pushed on everybody. And they use taglines too, weapons of war. Well, sure it is. Assault and, rifle. Yeah. The assault rifle is not an official nomenclature for anything mm-hmm. military or otherwise. It's whatever you call it. It's scary looking. They run by emotions to chip away at your rights. Yep. This is all my opinion. You may differ with me. But I'm going to show you Colt's AR-15, and this one was made for the civilian market. And you tell me, tell me how scary it looks. Okay. This is made by Colt, chambered in 223. There's your big ass bad 223. And every time I see a gun that looks like that, with that, with that full stock like this yeah i always think the same thing the same thing the same yeah. image comes into my mind every freaking time what's that the movie first blood oh yeah yeah the rambo's first movie well that's all why. the cops had them yep you know i mean that's they were just really this. really popular because you know? this is made by colt in nineteen seventy. see here's the thing hollywood popularized this look hollywood mm-hmm. and then hollywood hollywood helped to morph it into that look. Well, yep. this is like, and Hollywood does a terrible job of gun violence, man. Let me tell they you about. Let me tell you about Hollywood, man. and I bet you've seen it in a million movies. You got a bunch of bad guys and a bunch of good guys, and one of the groups got the drop on the others, and they're talking and they're jawing and they're saying all kind of really well scripted, smart ass shit, right? <laughs> and then somebody says something, it really pisses him off. Now I'm really mad. Is that, that scary? Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of clacking and racking. Oh, yeah. Now yeah. you know he's really serious, right? That's it. If, if that thing was loaded, number one, you'd Locked have a round loaded. jacked out of the chamber. Right. It's right. like, I'm going to sit here and threaten you, but don't make me put a bullet in the chamber. Right. Hollywood loves that noise. Oh, yeah. The same thing with the anything, anything racking and get. slacking. Is, yeah, I mean, that's just emotional. your average shotgun, you know? It's emotional. Your, two Joey? most recognized sounds in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Pump shotgun. Yeah. Zippo lighter. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's yeah. it. So here's the AR scary assault rifle. AR does not stand for assault rifle. There's no such thing as an official assault rifle. AR stands for Armalite, who invented this platform in the 50s. It was adopted by the military early 60s, and they called it the M16. Now, they called it the M16 machine gun. This is commercial. Nobody can get a machine gun without jumping through all kind of hoops and expenses. This does not shoot automatic. It's not a machine gun. It doesn't go It goes pow, pow, pow every time you pull the trigger. It's got a safe and a fire. If it was a military weapon, it would have a, either a three round burst or a fully auto option. This doesn't have it. It's got a scope. It's very scary. It's black. It just looks like death, right? So educate yourself, people. This is why I wanted to come on here and explain what an assault rifle is and isn't. And there's so many myths and misconceptions about the whole thing. Colt, 1977. Nice. Yeah. I like it. I love it. So let's talk about these uh, 30-round clips. You know, heard a lot on the news about these for a couple of years. So what's the big deal about the thirty-round clip? Because I know I've got a, I've got a handgun, an XD. That's a forty cal, I think. Mm-hmm. I think it holds either fifteen or twenty, and it's a handgun. So you add ten more, and all of a sudden everybody starts to shit in their pants. Why? They're uneducated. The I can take a ten-round magazine for an AR-15, and say three of them. So that's a thirty. If, yeah, that was a thirty. Yes, a thirty. So. There's about the difference of me shooting 10 rounds, dropping a mag, putting another mag in, is about three seconds. And then I'm right back firing again. So right. there's there's a three second pause in between mags. So six seconds, it may take me six seconds to go through longer to go through 30 rounds with the 10 round mag than right. with a 30 round mag. Um, I think they are looking at it as we can 
they could shoot more people at one time. Yeah, I think I think okay. actually the ATF is the ones who started with the whole high capacity magazines. They didn't want civilians to have the ability just to pop them off. Pop, 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 That's pop, it. Pow. That's it. You know, well, they don't want any. Uh, they don't want even firepower. That's that's the problem, and that happened. That showed up the first time. That really showed up uh, was in Hollywood with the the bank robbers. L.A. bank and, robbers. Yeah, it. those yeah. guys. Man, those dudes. Badass. Them cops were outnumbered. Yeah. Like, hey, we're out oh, yeah. outgunned, not yeah. outnumbered, but outgunned. And those massively. guys were wearing body armor. And they everything. were shooting AK forty seven. That's yeah. where SWAT teams were were born. Yeah, yeah. Yep. they said we gotta we gotta bulk up here because these dudes. Yep. They were. Head to toe, body armor. Body but armor. they still got taken out, didn't they? Event, well, one shot himself, and yeah. then the other one they let bleed to death. After yeah. they, they got him in a weak spot, shot him in the feet. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that took from him underneath down. the car and took him down. And then they, I guess he had another couple rounds in him from later in the shooting or earlier in the shooting, and uh, they just pretty much let him bleed out before the, well, they let any medics come in. But yeah. Um, yeah, they were they were big time. All they had was their shotguns and their uh, revolvers or handguns, and yeah. that was it. Yep. And the AKs were whooping their ass. I mean, yeah. it was just it was. Yeah, I remember bad. back in the seventies during when you'd watch TV, all the cops always had revolvers. Mm -hmm. I mean, none of them carry revolvers. Well, that was a pretty standard right? issue, I guess. In, in the eighties, they they went to the uh, automatics yeah, generally. I mean, you're talking yeah. about thousands of different entities of police right. work, but right. Hell, the Texas prison system still carries revolvers. Their, their transport officers, uh, they still carry revolvers. That wouldn't surprise me with the Texas prison system. Yeah, it's a joke. Yeah. I worked there yeah. for three years. It Nothing was, surprised was all me about take. the Texas prison system. Yeah, so. it is. It's yeah, a joke. he did a couple of podcasts before I came to help him with it. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. So, you know, you've got – in a. I don't even know what to say about all the mass shootings that have happened lately. I mean, it seems like since Columbine, because that wasn't really the original, but it was the original because it was publicized so much, because it happened at a school, because it was kids, yep. because they had, and, and not a lot of people know, they had a bunch of different types of arms. I mean, they came in with right. handguns, rifles, I think a shotgun. One of the, one of the shootings bombs. never even used the AR, right. but it was in his truck. So, oh, it was the AR. He had the AR. He had right. it. But that's not what he used to do to shoot him. Right. The AR never left. They the want to connect that. That's it. The people that are against your right of self-defense, they can say they are gun haters or whatever. They don't want you to be able to defend yourself is the bottom line. Right. Um, but see, here's the problem with this. And I, I think a lot of people don't realize. Let's take the gun thing completely out of that whole thing. And let's leave Klebold and Harris without weapons that throw a projectile real fast do you think those guys still would have figured out a way still would have gone in and killed a bunch of people if they didn't think have they that would have done it with knives or swords right or slingshots or whatever china think, china has a knife I've, stabbing I've, epidemic right now i would yeah. think that there's a 100 percent chance that klebold and harris still would have pulled it off without guns because they were they were going to do it well yeah I mean, they had written about it they had planned it they had gone through it and they didn't do it because weapons were available. They did it because they had what they thought was I've a I've said it purpose. before. We don't have mm -hmm. a gun control problem. We have a culture problem. We have a lack of respect for life problem. Yep. Yeah. We have too many damn crazy people that aren't being taken care of problem. That's it. And those exactly kids could have right. built a bomb. But they did. Build no, they a did. Bombs. They had several bombs. They had a couple they had propane go bombs. Off yeah. That they didn't set off. Yeah, yeah. propane bombs. So they had yeah, several I think in the I, building. I think yeah. I forgot that. Yeah. Yeah. That does sound familiar. Yeah. So, the, but they were gonna. The, the point I'm trying to make is they were gonna do it regardless. And I think even if you remove guns from society completely, if you were able to do it, which you can't. But if you could, there's still a lot of nut sacks out there who are gonna commit a lot of murder you in a be. lot more brutal ways too, yep. because. If you're limited and you don't have a gun, they'll club you to death. Oh God, they'll be yep. yeah, they'll beat you to death with a with a baseball bat wrapped in in um, what do you call it? Um, barbed wire. Barbed wire fence. Yeah, some nasty shit like that. Yep. The number one way of killing in the United States right now is not a gun. Blunt force trauma. Yeah. A ball bat, tire hammer, iron, hammer. That's that is Man. the most common murder Brutal. in the U.S. Is a blunt force trauma murder, not Freaking a gunshot brutal. murder. Right. Yeah. I think gun-related deaths are number 20 on the list of causes of death in the United States. Mm -hmm. 
as did you pull up a, a, a list? Do you, do yeah, I jotted I'd down like some stuff the, right I'd like quick. to know what number one is. Did you ever pull what number one is? Heart disease. Really? Yeah. I didn't write all 20 of them down. Crap. I There's remember what? Heart disease. Oh, the data. Yes. Yeah, you I ain't got I'm one, crazy. so you're cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that back. I love my... I, just I love my... <laughs> 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 just birthdayed the shit out of the guy. <laughs> I'll have a heart. I'll just be over here if you need me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just messing with you. The heart disease, huh? Yeah. I, yeah. My, both my folks died from kind of a cancer slash um, uh, uh, dementia type thing, you know, so I don't know if, if heart disease is also part of that or not, but I think once you get old enough, you're going to get a diseased heart, especially with all the shit we eat today, at least all the shit I eat. That's for a different show. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get into it. <laughs> Shit eating in a little while. Well, let's see what I got here. We just go with the. Uh, we know that gun firearm related deaths are ranked twenty in the United States. In the United States, these are twenty seventeen, and, and that includes suicide. So yeah, we'll break that down. And did did that get broke down between handguns and alleged assault weapons? I'm trying to tell you. Come on, she's been there. Anyway, Alan, <laughs> <laughs> firearm-related wow. deaths as of 2017, 39,000 and some change. This is all the United States. Okay. Homicide, 14,000. It's about a half of the Suicide is 60%. You can take out and leave 40% of that, and I didn't have time to do all the division or anything. So if that's 40, that'd be about 20, it'd be about 17 or 18,000 left. Um... 65,000 deaths every year in the United States, roughly, drug overdose. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. Double what you got with firearms. And uh, the flu, 43,000. 43, really? you got to keep things in perspective. Okay, man. so wait. The flu is 43,000. What was drug overdose? 60? 60? 65,000. 65? Wow. Yeah. Damn. Uh, handgun, 64%. Rifles, 4%. All this attention is being put on not only rifles, but a specific AR platform. Uh, 4% being about 1,500. Okay. And that doesn't count defending yourself, used by the police. Um, you know, it could be for a lot of different reasons, and I wish I'd got been able to get in, into there, and I wanted to get... How many? What percentage are people defending their home or their property or their life of or a loved one or whatever? But it varies so much by the definition of self-defense that I was getting anything from sixty thousand a year to two and a half million instances of defending yourself with a firearm. So it's enough to tell you that it's minuscule. All this attention is on a minuscule problem by the numbers. With the numbers don't lie. These are from the CDC. Okay, and uh, so there's an agenda there, and it's pushed, and by Hollywood, which you mentioned, they don't understand guns. They know they're scary, and they they make them as scary as they possible. They like the shit out of them because yeah. they made a lot of money off guns. Oh, some of these little Hollywood yeah. idiots that are so anti-gun. The next movie they come out with, they're they're out there blasting away, you yeah. know, doing cartwheels through midair, chicks in bikinis. <laughs> It's just, Chicks in bikinis shooting guns. <laughs> Send me that link and we'll talk about it some more. <laughs> Jackie Brown. It's in the movie oh, yeah? Jackie Brown, yeah. Jackie Brown. Yeah, right at the beginning. It's yeah. From the 70s? Yeah. You don't remember Jackie Brown? I'm trying to remember that lady's name. <clears throat> Great movie, man. I knew there was something special about her. It was a, a Quentin time Tarantino ago. movie. Not from the 70s. Quentin Tarantino did Jackie Brown. It was one of his first. I'll look it up. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, yeah, chicks in bikinis shooting assault weapons. Huh? <laughs> Where do they keep their extra magazines? Don't answer that. <laughs> anyway, there's that's what they call it a banana clip. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, holster. <laughs> so, uh, knives, four, fourteen hundred people a year. Uh, hands and feet, bare hands, kicking the hell out of somebody till they're dead. Six hundred a year. Rifles are less than yeah. that. We're not outlawing feet. Hey, so I got a question back on the uh, um, concealed carry permit. 
So does that cover knobs or, or is it just any weapon? Any weapon. Even your car. Really? Your car is a weapon. You can use it as a weapon. Yeah. Um, so does it. So you need a concealed carry permit to carry a knife concealed? No. If it's a. No, no, no. I'm sorry. No. You don't have to have a permit to carry a knife. They changed the law a few years ago on the knives. Used okay. to, it was five and a half inches. Yeah, right. Now they've dropped all knife laws altogether. You can walk down the street with a samurai sword on your back. Yeah. Um, huh. I got I got a thing from. Um, um, what's that little cheesy magazine you get? It's got all those. Uh, weapons and and throwing stars. They've got a Bowie knife. It's 17 inches long, 20 bucks. Made by Timber Rattler or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. came out of India or whatever. But it's like got a it. wooden handle. It's stainless of some kind. Yeah. It's like a sword. Yeah. It's a joke. I like mm-hmm. to wear it at the deer lease just to freak my buddies out. You know. But you could I could walk around with that thing. Really? Yeah. 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 And it's you the can. blade's 14 inches. You can. Wow. So I should have brought it. That's generally when they come in the store. If I know, I can tell they were if they're not supposed to have a gun, is they'll have a a, a hog leg knife hanging off their side, you yeah. know, yeah. mile long. Yeah, you know, it's it's crazy. But no, there, ha- there is no laws for knives now. Okay. Uh, now some cities like San Antonio has still has that five and a half inch law, uh, but Texas dropped that altogether, and you don't have to have a permit to carry that or anything like that. Well, wow. uh, but for it, it, when I was getting at with your car, like with uh, it's one uh, insurance, I say insurance. It's a, it's a a law firm that covers people that uh, uh, I don't want to say names or anything like that. But there's there's a, a law firm that carry covers people that if you shoot somebody, if you're a member of their group, they will. They right. Yeah, I've heard you. a couple of those. Right. Yeah. And they take care of it all together. They they work with you. They you know you don't pay anything but what you pay then. Right. So you don't pay all you pay is your court costs. <clears throat> you don't have to pay attorney fees. Yeah, or there's no like deductibles that. or anything. Isn't that right. an insurance like an insurance policy? Kind of like insurance. I call it a cheap insurance policy, but they don't, <clears throat> they don't like to call it insurance. But right. Um, but they cover you if you have to defend yourself, no matter what. Uh, if you have to run over somebody because they got a gun pointed at you and you got to run them over to take them out, hey, you're cool. Yeah, I think mine's yeah. like $29 a year. I mean, really? shit. Yeah. yeah, and it's important Jeez. to have because if you ever do get in a situation where you do have to use a weapon, it's it's a long, drawn-out oh, yeah. mess. Man. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, yeah, it's uh, deep shit. One of my buddies, he was uh, on the bar, and when he, he sells for this particular company, and he, he used to own a bar. And he got in a situation where... Uh, there was some guys in his bar. He wasn't there. Um, they actually put their hands on the bartender, a female, mm-hmm. and, and she had called him. Well, he showed up as they were leaving, and he blocked them, and they, uh, you know, told him they were going to run him over or whatever if he didn't move. So he brought his weapon, and their whole attitude changed, of course. But he let them go, and they left. Well, the problem was he didn't call the cops and tell them what happened what he had to do right. and so the uh other people called the cops and said hey this crazy guy pulled a gun on us he had to go down to the, the cops knew him and called him and said hey you 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 got a pretty serious charge against you you need to come down here and check this out you know mm-hmm. uh so they got it all worked out got it figured out but that was going to cost him right at 30 grand <laughs> to get out yeah that's mm-hmm. a lot of you money. know versus 130 dollars a year 129 dollars a year something like that um so it's it's definitely if you own a gun uh, no matter which one you go with i would definitely go with find you a company that will uh a, a lawyer a law firm right i i would suggest a law firm that that's all they do is handle guns um there's okay. some other ones out there that what they do is they handle divorce, they handle this. All they are is sure. referral. You pay them so much a month or a year, and then when you need them, you call them, hey, I need a divorce attorney. They hook you up with a divorce attorney. Right. That's, you're still going to pay. Uh, where there's one out there that that's all they cover. They don't handle divorce. They don't handle anything but shootings. Uh, and and they do a, a, a fantastic job right. of and doing there's that. A, there's, you could go to law school for eight years and not know much about right. that particular section. So a specialist for and sure. their their head attorney. Uh, if you're not a member of that 
that group is seven hundred bucks an hour. Is his fees? Yeah, yeah. Seven hundred yeah, lawyers. Are that sounds about right? average. Yeah. yeah well, I'll tell sure. you what happened to me, and I think I've told you before. It's not common knowledge to even most of my friends, but I had to use uh, deadly self defense in 1995 took the guy out he kicked my door in threatened everybody in the house and uh it was it went to the grand jury it was obvious self-defense but they've got to present those cases and there's a lot of weirdness that goes on and that was the longest three months of my life oh, before bet. it came back no bill <clears throat> mm-hmm. and i didn't know you know i was going to go to prison or not it was it even has some comical parts too as tragic as it was and there's nothing heroic about it it's a terrible thing that happened but during the time that it was at the grand jury it doesn't happen like okay monday we're gonna let you know it's a while i would go to work i was working uh at harris county engineer uh maintenance guy and twice this happened i, I leave about six thirty in the morning and there's a car outside right next to the driveway a couple of guys get out and it's like uh hey uh yeah we're from the homicide division i thought oh shit here it goes we just need to ask you a couple of questions it was like an episode of columbo right i'm sorry to bother you i know this is ridiculous <laughs> but uh we gotta ask these things were your shoes tied well, you weren't banging his wife were you <laughs> uh, we didn't think you were okay you know, have an air i'm sorry to bother you twice that happened and then I think the second time they said, y'all weren't dealing drugs or anything. And I said, no, no. Well, his family up in Virginia said that y'all might have been uh, selling stuff back and forth. And I said, well, that ain't true. The family in Virginia was uh, really understandably upset about the whole thing. Of course, yeah. And uh, so it turned out as good as it could have turned out. And as when what made me really think of that was when you said, if anything happens, you're not going to get your weapon back. I wouldn't have got mine back, but I hounded their asses for a year. Yeah. My uh, my weapon was a <coughs> Winchester 94 a Trapper, and uh, I wanted it back. So they had changed their evidence room, and, well, we had got to catalog everything. And, you know, if <coughs> I had left them alone, I'd, I wouldn't have had got oh, yeah, that thing Oh, yeah, HPD's horrible at that. Yeah. Finally, they said, okay, okay, we've got it. Come on down. Come get your, your Winchester 94. So I go down there, and they're not happy with me because I've hounded the hell out of them. They know me by name. Oh, you're Hogan. Jeez. Yeah. Here's, your, here's your gun. It had an evidence number just scratched in yep. right to the in the side of the receiver man really yeah 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 number yeah, they don't care about huh, a nine digit number i figured a, they'd elect- tag it with some sort of tag or something no. it's permanent on yeah. there permanent. well electro pencil or something you know just tore it up okay well that's i'll get past that and uh and here's this little bag here there's your your bullet fragments no shit well <laughs> you can ask my daughter and my ex-wife because when i came home and i said well i got my gun back and i got this little bag and these little chunks of lead and they were identified of where they they hit the guy yeah not something i needed but it was part of the evidence yeah right? so yeah I that's my story man give it all back you, you don't yeah. want to be in that place <clears throat> but you want to be prepared to defend you're yourself. lucky you're lucky you got it back most yeah. people don't most people don't know that you can request it back and try to get it back. It's still uh, your property, technically. Yep. It's there as well as evidence. And the biggest story is, well, we lost it, we can't find it, or it's been destroyed already. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you do get it back, it's going to be butchered. It's going to have yeah. that property room number is going to be, they find the most obvious place to put it, and they don't worry about how neat it is or anything. Yeah. Sometimes I've seen some of them like they've been scratched in with a pocket knife. Wow. I mean, it's terrible. Mm-hmm. They they butcher them. Yeah. We had one come in not too long ago. A guy got back. He was missing parts. And he said, why would it not have the parts? I said, because somebody in the property room needed the parts for yeah. that gun. I need a trigger gun. assembly for this very yeah. weapon. Yeah. I said, because it's not something that would just <clears throat> fall off the gun. You know, it had to be taken apart to take off that part. Right. Right. And, and, and so, yeah, it's... It's terrible. What All those cops at the, at the... Well, at we've the, got a seizure problem in this country, too, yeah. that, that needs to be addressed. Yeah. But that'll be on another podcast, and I'll invite somebody good for that one. <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, I've, I've been watching a few videos on that and, and kind of doing a little bit of research. And I'm really surprised that they can come seize your property, take it from you without charging you for a crime, and then put you in a position to where you have to prove your innocence in order to get your property back, and you still may not get it back. Yep. You sound like you speak from experience. Negative, but I feel like I could. Mm -hmm. Hence me wanting to own those types of, you know. Yeah. You know, I've always felt like even local government is just right on the edge of, of the line between between being there for us and being there yep. against us. Well, and, you know, and it doesn't matter, Democrat or Republican, <laughs> politicians or politicians. No, this is a bipartisan, this yeah. is a bipartisan they like, idea. Could they love control. And once they get right. some control... They don't want to give it back. <clears throat> yeah. Now you got to last fight year for it back, and, it. and usually it's got to get bloody in order for you to get your rights back. And people yeah. don't understand that. They really don't, man. Every time, you know, you let one little thing go, and it, I've even gotten into conversations with my wife. She's like, "Why do you care so much?" I'm like, "Because it's just another notch, another notch, another notch." Oh Before yeah. You know it. They're not going to come know. marching in here and go give me all your weapons. They're going to chip away, chip oh, yeah. away until you can't get ammo, or they're too expensive, or right. it's illegal to own that. How do you move a mountain? You don't move it all at once. You move it stone by stone. Right. You know, and that's, yep. you know, and that's, that's what you're seeing with our gun rights. That's oh, exactly yeah, what you're seeing. A little bit at a time. A little bit. Yeah. Take for instance the SIG brace, this arm brace. Okay, it's fixing to become illegal. And Why? Because the the new ATF director doesn't want it. And he's, of course, if you've listened to any of his stuff on where he's being interviewed by Congress for mm -hmm. the job, uh, to be uh, approved for the job, he is major anti-gun hater he is a hmm. gun hater that's why they picked him he sat right there in congress and said that we the civilians of the united states need nothing over a 22 caliber and we do not need anything semi-auto 22 is you dead know, piece man. you can do everything you need to do to 22 i beg to differ right? yeah you can back to the bill of needs again right bullshit so they went after the arm brace about six months ago uh they got so much flack back from uh, the public that they was like okay we'll just let it die we don't, yeah. we, we don't worry about it and then uh, now it's back up for he's putting it back up for grabs again so you know it's just the uh, what was the first one they did the the bump stock yep uh huh okay oh well, it's illegal you know and we're just we're not gonna we're just gonna let we're not gonna debate it no no it's just you're not gonna have it anymore right you know uh, which was wrong and so the people who already have those are the grandfather no or no, nope. no you get caught with one no. you're, you're you in better trouble. destroy it wow. or turn it in right yeah well the bump stocks when that happened in las vegas mm -hmm. brought all the whole bump stock oh my god he had a bump stock you can argue about bump stocks whatever they did take them away but let me show you some hypocrisy i got a, a buddy he's a close buddy He's a Bernie guy, okay? We both love firearms and milsurp and weapons. We love to go shooting and everything. So he's in a he's he's got his own issues to deal with. But let me show you some hypocrisy. They're going to take those bump stocks away. Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, uh, they've been talking about it since this happened a couple of days ago, and uh, I can see that. Trump's probably going to go along with it, and they're just going to wave the magic wand and make them go away. I don't have one. I don't really want one, but I don't like to see that kind of thing happen. Now, my Bernie buddy gets on the Internet as fast as he can. He finds a couple bump stocks. What are you getting bump stocks for? Because it's an investment. And he's got to remain nameless because after they were outlawed, he got a pretty penny for them. Oh, yeah. One of them yeah. to my Obama buddy. <clears throat> same yep. thing yep. and that's that's where this government control and lefties in general liberals are are generally good people they want the same things they're just thinking with their heart the left is communism okay mm -hmm. the far that's right. where it starts well everything's bad at the extremes though. at the extremes you know yeah so uh, my obama buddy bought one of his bump stocks now, both of them are voting for people that want to go a whole lot further than that mm -hmm. right you know so, uh, hypocrisy, man. You either got to believe something or not, you know? Yep. And Congress never made that law. Right. Never made that law. There's not written really anywhere. And these changes on, on that ATF's going to make, 
they'll never be made truly law. I don't know where or how they've gotten where the DEA, the ATF, and all can make laws. But that's what they're doing. That's what, yeah, that's exactly what's happening. The three well, branches what, what of what government. About our, yeah, what about our judicial process? That's what you I'm know? saying. It's just it's. You know, it, it's if a Republican did half the stuff the Democrats have done, they'd be in under the prison. You know, uh, they get away with way too much yeah. just because of what they are. Yeah, it seems yeah. like that's the, definitely the case. Yeah. And so, okay, you want to take our, our, our <clears throat> this away, then go to Congress. Let's put it before Congress. Let them, they're the lawmakers. ATF's not lawmakers. Right. They're the lawmakers. Let right. them make that policy law if not then it's not a law but yet we still go to prison it's it's still really and truly a law just because it's a policy mm-hmm. they still are going to say it's a law when it's not it's not never it was never made into a well, law. they need to put a stop to all that shit because the bump stocks when trump did the bump stocks yeah I, man i i hated that and I am not a – I can make a bump stock out of a piece of string, okay? I don't have to have a piece of plastic just to, to make my gun fire for auto. I can do that with my belt loop, all right, mm-hmm. um, if you know what you're doing and know how everything works. And so – but I'm not a full auto fan. Unless it's your last Hail Mary and you're just trying to take out as many people <clears throat> as you can before you get got – yeah. Then you know you're being overran, something like that. If not, you're just wasting ammo, right. you know. And so, or you want to go out and have fun, okay? There's a lot of guys that had them just because they wanted to go out and shoot full auto, full auto. And, and it's really not full auto, but it's close. <coughs> uh, and it's fun, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'll be the first one to admit I like going out and throwing, you know, thirty rounds down range in, a, in less than a, you know, right. thirty seconds. You yeah, know, it's fun. Uh, but then I'm done because I look at how much ammo costs. It's, and it's like, okay, I, right. I don't want to do that no more. Uh, but when he took those away, I was really mad, even though I don't didn't care for them, because it's just one chip, yeah. one more chip away. At, at what well, we, and it never became law. He just did an executive order yep, and right. made it happen. Well, it shouldn't. He shouldn't be able to do that. He shouldn't make an exec, be able to make an executive order. And it become law without going through Congress right. and being well, you, made law. You, you yeah. got to believe in liberty and have your principles. And even though I don't have any desire for a bump stock, you got to know that your yep. freedoms are being taken away. That's and you, you can not like that. Yep. You know, I don't want people to go around beating up gay people. Yep. And I'll fight for them. That doesn't mean I'm one of them or anything. Right. You know, right. it's the principles. It's freedom. It's it's America, man. Yep. So far. I yep. agree. I agree. So, Alan, um, you know, let, let's say I'm a guy that I've never owned a gun before, but I'm seriously thinking about concealed carry, and I want to buy a weapon. I mean, what what should an individual like that consider, and, and what would you do as, as, you know, a gun store owner to help that guy get what he needs to get and keep him safe? And Well, and, what we uh, first thing we do is we ask, of course, What's your intentions? Are you going to carry it on your person? Are you going to keep it in your car? Are you keeping it for the house protection? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that way I kind of get a feel for, I know if you're going to conceal carry, that I know I need a a, a compact size gun or at least a mid-size. If you're going for (laughs) something for the house, we can go with a full-size gun. It's not going to be a big deal. Uh, Because you want to be comfortable. If you're not comfortable, you're not going to carry uh, right. And and that's just I tell everybody and they're like oh this is not comfortable well you got to either get used to it or find a way that is comfortable because right. if it's poking you in the side constantly and it's driving you nuts eventually you're gonna stop carrying um, most of the time people can get used to it and and sometimes it's just a matter of holster change to be able to do that mm-hmm. um, or location but, or location exactly uh, like I can't appendix carry uh, I got too much Dunlap. You know, I'd have to pull something up to get to it, pull my stomach up to get to it. Besides so, your shirt. Right. <laughs> like uh, somebody asked me the other day, we sell ankle holsters, and they were like, well, do you have an ankle holster? I was like, no. I'd have to fall down to get to it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, we would, you know, go through the, 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 the process of finding out what it is you're actually wanting to do, and then we try to fit you for the gun. Obviously, 
you got bigger hands than say a 21 year old female that weighs 100 pounds right uh so the size of the gun is going to make a difference the thickness of the gun is going to make a difference if i think like i could put you in a 19 a glock 19 double stack 19 you'd have no problems with that whatsoever yeah a smaller female wouldn't probably be able to get her she wouldn't feel comfortable because her hand's not going to go completely around the grip because it's so wide right so i might put her in say a glock 43 that's got a narrow uh grip to it uh you know it's all those factors come into play when we're trying to fit you for a gun right if you're hauling hay you don't want to go buy a corvette right yeah and people say all the time I, I, you know I've, i'll have which right now i don't have hardly anything in the cases because we can't get anything when we right. do we sell it as fast as we get it but usually we have an array of stuff for people to try. And if I don't feel comfortable, and there's been a many of customers, I've sent them somewhere else because I didn't feel comfortable putting them in a gun that we had just because I wanted to sell that gun. Uh, and I refuse to do that. If I don't think that gun's right for you, I'll tell you it's not right, right. for you. This is what I think would be right for you. Go to this store or whatever i'll call other shops that i know that i'm friends with and say hey you got this in stock yeah i'm sending somebody to you and then they go and get a feel for it another good idea would be go to a gun show go to a gun show not to buy go to a gun show and there's just about every handgun you want right. to imagine there yeah pick them up pick them up feel, feel them. them put your hands on yeah. them see if it feels good in your hands yeah, see you which know. one feels like a glove right yeah uh my wife i tried to get her i'm a glock fanatic um only as a gunsmith that's that is my go-to gun um my wife didn't like glock but don't have external safety well no it's got three internal safeties right know? Uh, you're not going to accidentally discharge <clears throat> this gun unless you pull the trigger. You have to pull the trigger. Yeah, you can rack it and throw it in the dryer. And you turn run over it with a tank. It yeah. ain't going to do nothing until you. Right. It's physically impossible. And we've had I've had people come in the store. Oh, I don't like them. Why not? Well, I had a kid do this one day. He said, Well, I loaded one up at the range, put one in the chamber, laid the gun down, and was loading something else, and it went off. And I said, You're a liar. Bullshit. Yeah. I said, You're a liar. It's impossible. It's physically impossible for that to happen. Right. I said, now, you may have had a delayed charge. You may have pulled the trigger, and nothing happened. You laid the gun down, and it went off. Right. That's possible. But you that gun did not just go off on its own. Right. And so, uh, you know, she never would. I, I'd bring, I bet I bought six different guns home for her to try. Nope, it just don't feel right in my hand. Okay, well, what does it feel <clears throat> right about it? Well, I can't, t- I, don't, I can't describe it. It just ain't right in my hand, you know. So I brought her a gun one day. And it had a standard magazine in it. Nope, nope, same thing. It don't feel right in my hand. So I put the extended magazine in it with the extension on it. And I yeah. said, now try it. She, oh, that's it. That's it. I said, why couldn't you tell me you needed a longer grip? We could have solved this problem yeah. a long was time ago. Was her pinky hanging off of us? <laughs> so, that's what it was. Yeah, so we got her that, and we, we were out shooting one day. And she's never really been real big. She shot rifles a lot when she was younger, but she never was real big on handguns. And so I was teaching her how to shoot and, and um, teaching her the basics and everything. Well, she was all antsy, and I'm loading her magazines for her. And she's like, give me your Glock. Let me shoot it. I'm like, uh, no, you don't like Glocks. Remember, they're not safe. And she's <laughs> like, give me your gun. I want to shoot it. You know, so I, I told her, I was like, no, because you're going to want it. You go, If I give you this Glock and it shoots, you're going to want it. <laughs> Right. And no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Just let me have it. So I give her the gun. She goes out and shoots it. She comes back. She's like, "Yeah, you can sell that. Uh, you can sell that Springfield. I'm, I, I, I'm taking this Glock." Yeah. Uh-huh. And, uh, you knew and it. I was like, yeah. "So that means I can buy me another Glock, right?" She said, "Well, of course." I'm like, "Okay, well, we're good. As long as I can get me another, one, <laughs> right. we're good." There so, you go. but yeah, it. Um, we're going to try to fit you, the person with the gun, and, and if I don't think you can handle the recoil, I'm going to try to put you in a lot of recoil. I mean, there's a ton of questions we ask when you go to buy a gun. We just, now, we got customers to come in, I want that gun. Okay. Right. You know, yeah, they uh, kind of know what they're looking for. Right, right. But we can tell when they really don't know, and a lot of times they'll tell us they don't really know. Um, I have had some customers where I wouldn't <clears throat> fill my gun. Yeah, you know, I just we had one that you know she was obvious she didn't really. It was almost like somebody was wanting her to buy a gun and she really didn't want to. Um, and I asked her, you know, well, and they weren't there with her. No, no, she was by herself. And she's like, well, I think I need something for protection. Okay, and she said something maybe like a twenty-two. 
Okay, well, a twenty two is not going to do a whole lot of damage. I said, depend on where you shoot them at. Mm-hmm, I said, right. That is one of the worst wounds that a, a surgeon, I asked a surgeon one oh, time, yeah, what's around. the worst worst bullet wound to sew yeah. up? He said, twenty two. A twenty two in the gut. Because you never know where you're going to find right. it. He said, yeah. I think a ricochet off every rib in there, and he says, right. tutting you apart all the way around. He said, you'll never get all the holes sewed up. Yeah. So, and so I asked her, I was like, okay, is it because of recoil? She said, no, I don't want to hurt them. Well, then why do you, you need a stun gun. Mm-hmm. You need a taser, stun gun. Yeah, you, yeah. you don't bear you know, spray or something. You know, I said, what, you know, I said, well, where would you plan on shooting them? Oh, I'd only have to shoot them in the foot. And I was like, you know what? That's, you, r- that's you, ridiculous. You don't need a gun. And I wouldn't sell her a gun. She said, you're refusing to sell me a gun? I said, yes, I am. I don't think you need one. With your mentality of what you want to do, yeah. not saying you're dumb or anything like that, but what you have in your mind, what you want to do, you need something besides a gun. You need a slingshot. You need you know, bear spray or something like that. Yeah, right. You don't need a gun. Her expectations did not match reality no, no. whatsoever. And at the same time, we have five-foot granny, 74 years old, comes in, wants a full-size uh, 1911 45 yeah. you know and uh, I'm like Come I on. love the 1911 I love it it's <laughs> it like is. it's like a Glock but for men <laughs> <laughs> all in good fun buddy. Right. oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> but with a lot more problems yeah <laughs> yes yeah, I had a, I had a gotcha. 1911 that would jam on the third shot no matter what you did mm-hmm. and uh, no matter what jam on the third shot change it change the ammo out springs we, yeah. ah, change them out change out the clip we had the rail worked on. The ramp. Yeah, the ramp worked on, and no matter what, third shot. As a matter of fact, we used it uh, to teach people how to clear malfunctions because mm-hmm. that was the best gun for it. Yeah. And ended up getting rid of it because I was about like, that. Shit, maybe I the extractor or something. Uh, there was something wrong with it, but it was not. You still got it? No, I gave it up. I gave it away. So I gave it to the guy that was doing the tactical training. Oh, okay. Because he wanted to use it he to needed teach a, people how to clear malfunctions. He needed one that was guaranteed to fail. I kept my XD. <laughs> it was a great gun. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It was a good yeah. gun. So. There's a lot of good guns out there. There's a lot uh, of crappy guns out there. Yeah. Uh, there's some we won't even work on in the shop. You know, they bring them in all the time. I'm like, take it somewhere else. Yeah. We don't work on them. Why? I don't want to be involved in the lawsuit when that gun blows up. or Yeah. yeah. I don't want no part of it. Yeah, and uh, and they sometimes they get mad, but right? Yeah, it's all know, that buy a gun that somebody will work on. I mean, in, stop yeah. buying garbage, buy something, spend a little bit of money. What's that? Yeah, German manufacturer. Oh, God, I shouldn't have even brought it up. But you did. Win Winda Windicator. A Windicator. Yeah, yeah. That, maybe that. That's that was a revolver. The Windicator was a revolver. Right. That German company that makes that has a pretty bad reputation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, you know there's some that we will that still are, are not great guns. Rones, uh, those are those were true Saturday night specials, throw yeah. down guns. You know, right. um, what about Bursa? Bursa, I won't work on a Bursa. Yeah, I won't work on one. Um, I've never had nothing but problems with Bursas. Now some people swear by them. Best gun I ever owned. You know. Uh, obviously, they haven't owned any real good guns because, right. I mean, sometimes, I mean, it's like anything. You get, you may get one that's perfect yeah. and they'll have no problems or anything like that. You may get a Smith & Wesson. I've had Smith & Wessons out of the box, wouldn't fire. Uh, AR, wow. as a matter of fact, that, that right wow. out of the box, wouldn't fire. And the reason why they were, she was short-chambered. Yeah. They were mass-producing them so fast that quality control wouldn't catch them and the yeah. reamers were were had done downsized so much that I had to cut the chamber a quarter inch deeper uh, in order for it to even go into battery. And that was a brand new gun. Well, uh, they, we were at a gun show one time. My buddy saw a high point nine millimeter rifle, mm-hmm. uh, semi automatic, a carbine. It looked cool, felt good. And I told him, I said, I haven't heard, I never owned one, but I haven't heard a lot of good stuff about high point. Mm hmm. And it was cheap as shit. Oh, you yeah. got that thing for like yeah. 110 bucks. Yep. And we went out shooting, and that thing runs like a dream, yep. man. Yep. I couldn't believe it. I was happy for him. High Point, I like High Point's customer service. They have some one of the best customer service of any gun manufacturer I've ever dealt That's with. That's saying something. Um, I've actually talked to the owner uh, personally. Mr. Point? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he likes and to get high. <laughs> we, had, <laughs> we had had a problem, an issue with... We had one come in. It was a carbine. It looked like a banana. 
and I asked the girl, I said, what, what in the hell happened? Right on. Well, my boyfriend and I got in a fight, and he beat it on the floor in the kitchen and did this to it. I was like, well, Damn. next time it might be you he's beating on the floor. <clears throat> yeah, yeah really. he can't control himself any better. And so that. I was like, you, there's no way to fix this. It's, it's going to be cheaper to just buy another one. You know, I said, but I'll I'll give you twenty bucks for it for parts. You know what parts I can salvage? Barrel was bent. The barrel was bent. The the stock was broken half. I mean, it was there was a little just very little. The bolt was about all I was going to be able to yeah. salvage out of it. Right. And so, I gave her twenty bucks for the gun, and I called High Point up and I said, Hey, I need I got this gun. I need these parts. And they were like, Well, just send us the gun. I was like, Well. This isn't warranty. This is, you know, I told them what happened, and they said, no, just go ahead and send us the gun. We'll, 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 we'll make it right. What? Okay. It's the second, second time that's happened to me. I had one blow up because it was me. It wasn't a gun. I was rapid firing, and I had a squib round, and before I could realize, uh, from my brain clicked, it was stop shooting. I was already pulling the trigger. Right. And it went off and blew up. Blew up in my hand. Luckily, I did, got some shrapnel in the face, and that was it. But... Mm. Um, they replaced the entire gun, and I, I told them I was like, "Look, it's not, you know, warranty. This is me. I did this. You know, don't worry yeah. about it. Throw it all in the box and send it to us." They sent me a brand new gun. Wow. Well, with the uh, with the carbine, uh, we sent it in, and then about two days after we sent it in, a buddy of mine brought his in. That he said, "I heard they were updating the stock, so they give you the new stock for free." And I was like, "Yeah." He said, "I want, I want to do that." I said, "Okay." So we'll send it to him. So we sent it to him two days after we sent the first one. Well, about three weeks, we get his back. And we didn't get the other one back. And so I called High Point. Was like, "Hey, I got one. It shows both were shipped." Well, somebody signed for it. Somebody named Big Daddy. I was like, "I don't know who that is, but there ain't no Big Daddy here," hmm. you know. And so then we had to get the ATF involved because we had a missing gun. So we called the ATF, and a few minutes later, after I called the ATF, about 30 minutes goes by, the owner of High Point, his name's Jim, I'm not going to say his last name, but he, Point. <laughs> Jim Point, <laughs> he he called me and was like, look, this is Jim so-and-so with, with High Point. He said, I'm the, the owner of High Point, and he said, I, I kind of got to come clean with you on what what's, what's going on here. And I was like, okay. And he goes, the gun you sent in, it was all beat up and bashed up and all that. I was like, yeah. He said, we have to have, when we get one that comes in like that, we have to have it checked out by the FBI. They have to do a barrel casting, everything like that, to see if that gun was used in a crime. And that, and was trying to be destroyed is the reason why it got that damage. Huh. And he said, so it just cleared this morning that well. it wasn't used in any crime that they could find. And he said, so... You know, we're, I'm just letting you know we're gonna we're gonna fix the gun and get it back to you. But I wanted to let you know why it showed that it was shipped, but it really wasn't. And you know, wow. So, and I and he said we couldn't let you in on it because we didn't know if you was in on it or not. If it was something bad, if you were in on it, we they didn't had to know. scope it out. Yeah. So I was hmm. like, okay, no problem. So yeah, they they sent me a brand well, yeah, wasn't a brand new gun, but they sent it back with everything replaced except for like two parts. Mm -hmm. and, and the owner himself called yes, you personally. Yes. Now. What high point, their bad reputation that they got years ago was they had millions of mag springs that were not tempered properly. And they got out and they didn't realize until it's too late that millions of them were out on the out in the world right. that they weren't going to hold up. And so jam o -matics, they were, you know. The, I'm sure they did a recall, any, you put, but... No, they didn't. Actually, they didn't. But what they'll do, if you call them today and say, hey, my gunsmith said, you know, I got this this gun. He told me that the mag spring's bad. And they'll send you a brand new magazine. Right, right. Uh, sometimes they ask you to send your mag back in. Sometimes they don't. They just send you a brand new magazine. Hmm. Uh, so that was their issue. The guns are rock solid. I mean, they're a brick. They're not. Their nightstand gun or something, if you want to leave it in your truck, somebody steals it, you, you lost a couple hundred bucks, you know. Uh, but they are not something that, you, that I would ever want to carry only because of the weight factor and the size that they are. And only ones we sell in the store generally are the compacts or the C9s. Yeah. Because uh, they're small and short. The other ones are like <clears throat> a brick on a stick because that slide's so heavy. Uh, but as far as the workings of the gun, and they're fantastic guns. 
Uh, well, I have a whole new outlook on, yeah. on High Point. It's just the springs is what is was bad in them and gave them such a bad reputation. Because right. you could shoot, you know, full mag and it jam every round till you got down to about four, three or four rounds. Then it would feed like it was supposed to those last three or four. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because the spring the wasn't tension. strong enough to yeah. push up all those ammo. And so that was that was where their bad reputation and they do look hideous. Uh, but you know what? I, a lot of people say I don't want Glock because they look they look ugly. Okay, well I don't care what it looks like if it's saving my life. Yeah. Right. If I'm using it for what I you know if, if I want a barbecue gun I'm gonna get me a real fancy 1911 you know or yeah. something like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, you know Hickok 45. Right. <laughs> Glock fanatic. Mm -hmm. That guy for yeah. sure. I tell you, man, as as a gunsmith. Um, with what we have to work on all the time and we work on everything we work on everything from muskets to nowadays to the AR-15s we our specialty is the old school stuff uh, that most shops don't even look at anymore there's not very many old gunsmiths out there anymore that work on the old stuff most of them have retired or died off mm -hmm. unfortunately there never has been um, there was when I was young but not now any kind of apprenticeship type stuff they just they they don't I don't know it's just not there anymore, mm -hmm. um, but I was taught at a young age so I cut my teeth on what's considered antiques today I learned on, and so we work on all those old stuff and we've got several gun shops in Houston and area that send us work because they don't want to fool with it they're like oh well if it's not an AR we can't if it ain't an AR-15 or oh, an AK-47, yeah, they can't work on it. So, And we do. And we do complete restorations. We do sear coat. Uh, we do woodwork and, re and, and replace the wood um, and refinish wood and stuff like that. So yeah. we've done a lot of I work. do that as a hobby yep. just at home. I, yep. I love it. Duracoat sells a, a home kit mm -hmm. and aerosol. Mm -hmm. You don't have to mix shit. Right. Yeah, I used to spray Duracoat years ago. Um, unfortunately, Duracoat, and Cerakote both have their pros and cons. Yeah, I think they're they're equal to a point. They're pretty much equal. There's good things about Cerakote, and there's bad things about Cerakote. Same thing with Duracote. We did Duracote for a long time, but Duracote didn't do a good enough job responding to the public. They spent more emphasis on gun shops versus the the, the market, right. the people. And Cerakote ran with the people. And so more people, most people know about Cerakote. About half of them's never heard of Duracote. Huh. Uh, and so it got to where everybody wanted Duraco a Cerakote. Everybody wanted Cerakote. Yeah. So we started kind of changing over <clears throat> to the Cerakote. And Cerakote's harder than Duracote. But I can touch Duracote up after the fact. I can't touch Cerakote up. It has to be uh, sandblasted uh, and whole and redone. Hadn't thought about that. Again. Yeah, because it's a ceramic base and it generally chips out versus a scratch. But Cerakote will not stick to cured Cerakote. Once it's cured, it ain't sticking to it. So you can take a a, a gun that's coated in Cerakote and it's fully cured. You spray it with Cerakote over it, it's going to fish eye. Hmm. It, it's right. not going to. Will not adhere. Will not adhere huh. to it. You scratch it off with your fingernail. Um, that, so that's. You know, I like Duracoat because we can touch it up. Years down the road, we can come in and touch it up. Mm -hmm. Where Cerakote, you have to redo that whole part. Cerakote's a harder, more durable finish. Um, but like I say, you can't touch it up. And it's um, very finicky with touching the barrel or something. Once it's prepped, you don't touch no part right. of any of that with your bare hands. Uh, you have to have gloves on or that sear coat will not always adhere right. like it should to that spot where you touched it at. Duracoat ain't, wasn't quite as finicky. Uh, I could get away with a lot more with Duracoat than I could with mm -hmm. the sear coat. Um, but we just eventually, all my paint started going bad with Duracoat because nobody wanted it anymore. Everybody wanted a sear coat. So you got to change with the times, you yeah. know. And so that's what we <clears> did. I threw out all my Duracoat paints and all. But Duracoat is a damn good product. Um, and I I wouldn't have any qualms if someone wanted me to paint it today. It's going to cost them a little bit more because I've got to buy the paint. I probably, mm -hmm. I'm not going to have it in stock right. like I do with the sear coat. I buy in a bigger bottle, so I've always got that color. Uh, standard color 
rifle receiver barrel a uh, couple hundred bucks are you talking about on an ar platform yeah something like that say a upper a lower and the receiver nothing fancy standard uh just one color you're probably around 275 yeah uh if you want us to do the charging handle the you know your butt knobs and buttons and stuff like that it's fifty dollars more yeah uh if you want another color it's fifty dollars more if you want battle worn or you know that's fifty dollars more but we do everything from american flags to right uh, i mean oh the options are endless oh man. yes yes yeah. and i'm always my my family's background is paint and body and so i grew up in paint and body shop mm-hmm. and uh so painting is i love painting although i swear i'll never paint another car because uh, I was made to do all that when I was younger. I hate doing it now. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, but guns are fun. I like doing them. And I'm, we're always I'm coming up with new techniques, trying new things. You know, Cerakote says their technicians tell you you can't brush Cerakote. I made a liar out of them. You can. Uh, there's just the, the, so much is opened up with Cerakote that I can do and try. And we're working on one now we're going to call Acid Rain. Um, there's another one we're kind of working on using wax, uh, and it's I haven't we ain't come up with a name for it yet or what we're going to call it. But where well, I'm always working on different techniques and things like that. And generally, we'll do one up, take it to the gun show, and it's gone instantly. Uh, we did a skull, one that had the skull on the front. The bag well was a punisher. Skull. Yeah, well, it wasn't a punisher skull, it was just a regular skull. Uh-huh. And the whole front of the mag well was the skull, and then uh, we did it. I did the skull in white and did the uh, antique the black into the crevices and all that. And then we did the rest of it in uh, candy apple red. And uh, it wasn't a Cerakote clear. It was a Cerakote clear with a, a candy, yeah. gun candy added oh, to wow. it. Oh, wow. And, man, and I did it for my buddy. that He was going to sell it. And he's like, man, I don't want to sell it now. You know, <laughs> what, what do you think's a good price? I said, uh, I don't want to sell it price. I, I don't know, 1500 bucks. Yeah, ain't nobody going to pay that. Two hours. Hmm. Two hours it was gone. Yeah. And, and, and I bet he was that like, was impressive, man. Yeah, it looked really good. I really liked it. We did another one to it called, we called it Jack the Ripper. And now we got, he's got one now we did for him. And it's the same thing, but it's blue instead of red. And it's got uh, the skull. I put a gold tooth on the skull. And then we call, he, he's calling it Jack the Rapper. <laughs> 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 and uh, But he's got it priced up there. It's probably probably not going to go anywhere for a while but right. um yeah I, I have a lot of fun doing the Cerakote doing the different things i like it when i can just go in and create and not have i love it when my customers are like just do it do what you want to do i don't sure. care you know and uh, and we've got a couple of them that we've done several guns for and they'll just bring it in you know what i like do do something you're at the gun shows i'm sure I am. I go to the the Humble Gun Show and the Conroe Gun Show. So the two that I do. Right. Um, maybe start doing the Pasadena. I'm not sure. We. Re- I really don't take anything there to sell. We just take our custom stuff and and like this like this type of gun and mm-hmm. custom work that we do. A lot of people get mad because a lot of stuff I have marked not for sale, and they're like they're all they get all mad because it's not for sale. We have a, a Masonic 1911 and. Every show, I get cussed out because I don't want to sell a gun, you know. And it's uh, it's just it's a stainless 1911 Series 70, Series 80. I'm sorry. And we uh, did a square and compass on the slide. It's not painted. It's actually engraved. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we did. We, we don't do normal engraving. I think but, I've seen that gun. Uh, yeah, didn't you have it up at Lodge once? Mm-mm. No, not the 1911. Huh. And then we Somebody did the grill. Somebody brought one up there like that. But we did the, yeah. the, the square and compass in the slide we did with just an old, old school mill, uh, manual wow. mill. Cool, man. And, uh, yeah, I, my machinist that works for me, he is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And so we do slide, we put some slide cuts in the slide, decorated it up that way, and then we put the square and compass on both sides of the slide. And then I got some really nice G10 grips that were blue and then inserted the uh, countersunk the, the real right, nice uh, Masonic uh, concho mm-hmm. into the into the grips and man every show that's a big that's a big hit every show oh, I bet. and uh, we sold one uh, I, I had that one for myself and I've sold two off of that one so far uh, 
one guy in the, the Humble Lodge bought one for a fellow member of the lodge, and uh, I thought it was pretty neat. Yeah, that's but, cool. But, uh, yeah, he, uh, it, it was nice. It turned out really good, except his was – no, we – we did brown grips on that one. He wanted the grips brown instead of blue. Uh, but, yeah, it turned out fantastic. But we that's the stuff I like doing. I like doing crazy off-the-wall type stuff. We've done a lot of work for uh, several of our members of the lodge. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of them have been crazy colors, you know. Oh, I bet. And, Coming uh, out of our lodge, I'm not surprised. <laughs> done any pink ones? Uh, <laughs> done any pink ones? I have done a lot of really? pink ones, yeah, believe yeah. it or not. Yeah, I've done, I did a, a pink charter arms for a buddy of mine, right. yeah, for his wife. Yeah, We sell, I can't keep a pink, purple gun in the store. Man. Just, I can't, they, they go as fast as we put one out there. Wow. Now, we're fixing to, hopefully, um, if they come in, they were supposed to come in the last three weeks in a row, but we're supposed to have our own line, we're going to have our own line of ARs. They'll be called the Mac 15s, and if if we get them and able to build them out and sell them before they outlaw them, mm-hmm. but um, we're getting them in the raw, so they'll be whatever color you want it to be. And our serial number range I did on purpose. We started with zero zero one, okay, and uh, then because uh, I wanted 007, and we're going to do a 007 theme gun. We do a lot of theme guns, yeah, Harley motorcycles, Indian motorcycles. Uh, we've done a lot of theme guns, football teams and colleges mm-hmm. and stuff. And so this one's going to be uh, the 007, and we're going to do it That'd in gold, cool. gold finger theme. Yeah, yeah. And, I like it. Uh, we're going to do – it's going to be pricey, but we're going to do mm-hmm. all gold inlay in the writing and then all the – like the takedown pins, all, I'm having all that uh, gold plated. Mm-hmm. Probably ten carat gold plate. That's gonna be a beautiful piece, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I like doing them like that. It takes me a while to get them done because I don't do them all at one time. I have to do a little bit at a time, work it in right. between the, the paying jobs. Yeah, you know. There you and go. Then, then we'll probably put that one in some kind of a display case and, and put it out cool. for sale. But uh, well, I got to get down there and check you guys out, man. Yeah, yeah where? Why don't you tell everybody where your store is and maybe drop a phone number and an email okay. address well, too. Okay. Well, it's. Um, if you are coming from Porter on 1314 going towards 242, mm-hmm. just before you get to 242, we're on the right-hand side, directly across the street from Allendale Baptist Church. Okay. Uh, if you're coming from, say, the Cleveland area and you're coming up 242, when you get to, you can go 242 like you're going to 45. When you get to 1314, turn left, and we're less than a tenth of a mile on the left. Okay. Um, so you're pretty close to Thunder Gun Range. We're just there. down the street from Thunder. We're between okay. Thunder and 242. Okay. And what's the physical address? It's 16875 FM 1314. Okay. Conroe, Texas 77302. Awesome. And we're no affiliation with the gun range. I okay. just want to let people know that. Okay. Um, so the and, and the name of the store mac daddy cigars and guns we carry uh hand rolled cigars and uh, several different brands we don't have a huge humidor uh, wish i would have known that i was in the market for cigars i had a <laughs> podcast guest i wanted to yeah. give a couple of cigars to and and yep. uh, i ended up going to hound dogs or whatever that place right. is over on 494 but we won't yeah. allow cigar yeah. smoking in here anymore <laughs> yeah. oh my god i had one with him right yeah. Yeah. we couldn't see each other yeah. Yeah. Bet. i bet yeah. i bet you worked for two weeks getting the smell yeah, out of it, here it took a while yeah it took a while to get it cleaned up yeah. but it, it's still it's good to know that and you do carry cigars there too huh? we carry cigars and okay. and uh we're are we're kind of going through a change process right now um we're going to kind of get away from all the tactical stuff and vest and bags and holsters and all that. Okay. We're gearing more towards the gunsmithing. Uh, and so gunsmithing, gun care products, we're still going to sell guns and ammo because that's just, you, you got to have it. Right. Um, and so, but we're going to f- start phasing out all this other stuff. Uh, we're going to build a little bit, if we stay where we are, we're, we're, our lease is coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got less than a year left on our lease, so there's kind of controversy on whether the landlord ain't made up his mind if he's going to let us stay there or not. Okay. If we stay, we're going to build a bigger humidor, have a small smoking lounge, uh, and then we're going to – where a lot of the shop is now, the shopping area is now is going to be workshop. Uh, okay. So we're going to kind of 
downsize a little bit as far as all that goes. I mean, right now we can't get anything to sell ammo wise or gun wise, so we're we're sticking with what we got, and that's what's keeping us open is the gunsmithing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and so, unfortunately, that's we've got that going for with us. With all the millions of guns that flow off the shelf, a lot of them are going to need to be worked on. Yeah. And, and you do yeah. have a website, right? I do. It's yeah. MacDaddyCigarsAndGuns.com. Okay. And uh, there's another one, SmackDaddy'sGuns.com, but they're going to send you to the same place. Right. But, okay. uh, we just try to get up a bunch of different uh, domains. Yeah. Okay. So that way good nobody idea. interfering with me. But there you go. Um, and a good phone number? 936 231 3737. And we're open Tuesdays through Saturday, 9 to 6, closed Sundays and Mondays. Okay. Uh, we also do work all over the country. Uh, we do work for people in Georgia. I've done. We've got several customers in Dallas. Um, we have a lot of uh, outlying customers: Tom Ball, Baytown, Beaumont. We got a lot of customers in Beaumont okay. uh, that come to us and bring us stuff all the time. So, we've we've gotten a pretty good reputation since we've been open. Uh, we opened up ten years ago, nine years ago, and uh, it's it has flourished. Uh, we've been blessed, very well blessed with good customer returns and uh, with several law enforcement agencies we do work for several gun shops that we do work for uh, just kind of do it under the table you know people bring stuff into the shop yeah we'll do it and they bring it to us and we fix it give it back to them and you you know so uh, we do a lot of work for law officers Uh, we try to get their stuff done in and out if it's their if you're a if you're a law officer and you want us to clean your gun we have a, a special rate we charge $35 for law enforcement okay. if it's your service gun, okay, whether it be your shotgun, your AR, or your handgun. Mm-hmm. Uh, as long as it is your service weapon, uh, we'll clean it, inspect it, make sure everything's working on it like it's supposed to for 35 bucks. When we clean, we do a deep clean. We, do, we tear the gun completely apart and clean it. A lot of these places have these ultrasonic cleaners. Right. They pull the slide off, throw it in there, and they call that clean. That's not what we do. We, I was taught the old school way, and I still believe that's the best way. We tear that gun completely apart, and that way we can inspect parts. We know if something's cracked that you'd never see mm-hmm. throwing it in the ultrasonic cleaner mm-hmm. or the dishwasher, God forbid. <laughs> sure. uh, yeah. uh, so, you know, it's a lot of uh, things we look for when we're cleaning. But for law enforcement, we do that for $35, and we do it. We stop whatever we're working on right then. And, and do your gun. Okay. Uh, that way, if you bring it in, a lot of times they'll get off the night shift. Guys come in in the morning when we're open, or they'll have their wives drop it off first thing in the morning. They pick it up that afternoon on the way to work. Uh, we we that's It's priority number one is to get that gun fixed, cleaned, and get it back out to that officer before he goes back on duty the next day. Okay. And uh, so generally a couple hours we're calling saying, hey, it's ready. You know, uh, so that's one of the things we do for law enforcement. Um, so we we enjoy the guys that come in, and hang out with us sometimes, and uh, I'm always getting tags on the door that they stop and check. You know, on the days we're closed, stop and check and stuff yeah. like that. And so it, I, I I try to you know they do a world of stuff for us. You know, as as a community. So anytime I can kind of help them out a little bit, I can if I can afford it. And that's go. one of the ways I can do it. I can afford it by yeah. doing that. That's good. So. Um, but yeah, we, we do a lot of, uh, antique work, a lot of guns that are antique and old. We, we have the, I want, I want you to be able to shoot and I'm grandpa's sure you got gun. some of that on your website, right? It's yeah. Uh, we've got to revamp our website. We've got okay. to do some changes to that, especially now that we're doing some changes. We're getting away from the, the prepper stuff and all that. And, you know, so we, we going to have to revamp our website and get it where it needs to be okay and uh we'll leave that picture with you surrounded by all those honeys <laughs> yeah that a, was pretty funny that was in that our, our our very first year uh we didn't even have those guns in stock it was something one i brought from the house and buddies of mine gave me guns to use you know in this shoot and it was a, a photographer buddy of mine that was like i want to do a guns and girls shoot and i was like okay you know I said, well, what's in it for me? He goes, you can use any of the pictures you want. They're for free. They're yours. Any of the pictures for advertising or anything like that. I was like, okay. It's not going to cost me anything. Right. You know, why not? Yeah. I'd and go for that too. So it was uh, it was very interesting. We had we had a lot of fun. Uh, girls were kind of, 
out there a little bit, but it, it was it was fun. He brought the girls. He brought the, the girls. He brought the girls, and okay. uh, except for the blonde, I brought her. The, oh. blonde, the long blonde is behind you, me. You belong to her. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And uh, and we did. There's another picture. You, I don't know if you saw it or not. With her in my lap, and uh, it was it was all we could I do to get so. her to take that picture. She did not. She, to this day, she hates that picture. <laughs> so I throw it out there all the time, just just to make her mad. But um, yeah, we had a fun time that day. It was it was pretty <clears> neat, and um, we all had fun, enjoyed it, and gave us some exposure and let us have something to use for advertisement. Yeah. I'm all about free advertising because it's so expensive to advertise yeah. these days yeah it's expensive as hell and man. and it's not like anything unlike anything else there's scams out there you think you're getting a right. good deal the next thing you know you, yeah. you're taking it in the backside. so well we're trying to get yeah. studio one three into more of the uh production in you know we mm -hmm. do the podcast and that's great fun but uh to get you can call it commercials or whatever you want to uh advertising promos or whatever mm -hmm. people want to do mm -hmm. remote right you know kind of thing so right yeah we had a deal going with uh one of the radio stations up in livingston and um the girl that was the dj i used to work with at the prison and so she really emphasized my advertisement and after she left she she went on to bigger and better things and so the new guy that took over her spot was not enthusiastic i mean it, you could tell he's just reading the script and he could really care less if he you know where she was i know this guy he's a friend of mine he's a great guy right. you know and that comes through big time it, it yeah, does it really, it really does, does. Yeah. and so we picked up a lot of customers from up there but <clears throat> we ended up stopping it because i'm like i'm not paying what i'm paying to get what i'm getting now you know and and the manager was basically well you got spoiled she spoiled you. I was like, well, she did her job, you know. Yeah. She did her job. She didn't spoil right. me. She did her job. <clears throat> and the new guy's not doing his job as far as I'm concerned. So yeah. we uh, – word of mouth is, is our main advertising and stuff like, you know, doing can't stuff like this. It. Yeah, you can't beat it. And then I do uh, – Bubba Tullis and his wife do uh, – Shondi, they do gun classes. Bubba Tullis and Shondi are both going to be on the podcast pretty cool. soon. They've cool. asked to come on. I just right. haven't scheduled them in yet. When they have a big class, I go and help those, them. Those two are a hoot together. Oh, they're, 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 oh my God. they're something else. They, they really are. are something else. I can't yeah. wait to meet them. Yeah, oh, yeah. Else. They're interesting. Yeah. Trust me, they're interesting. But yeah, that's for sure. And we, I helped them out mm -hmm. on classes. And, and, and how that started out was Chief Carlisle at uh, Roman Forest mm -hmm. was doing a gun class. Bubba was doing it. This was right. before him and Shondi even – knew each other right and uh i called um chief up and said hey you think maybe i could come give like a little five minute plug on my store you know in the class and he's like well yeah matter of fact you know we might need some help at the range and i'm like well, how do you say no yeah and i'm like well right. yeah okay yeah i don't have a problem with that so we start i started doing these classes with bubba and we were doing 60 70 80 people in a class oh, yeah it was crazy. Wow. And so um, we were just having a good time. And I was able to be one-on-one -on -one with people, the best advertising you can do. Sure. And then when their gun breaks down on them at the range while they're trying to qualify, I'm piecing it together and doing what I can to get them through. Or whatever. You know, yeah. to get them through the, the, so they could finish shooting. And, you know, they're lifelong customers. I mean, sure. Mm -hmm. so it, and it, even if not, and someone else has a problem, oh, I know this guy, you need to go see exactly. him. Exactly. Yeah. And my wife, my wife, she was like, why are you always, I mean, it's your day off. You, you know, why? it's because it's advertising. It's yeah. free advertising. It's free. All I got to do is sweat a little bit. It's free advertising, and I get it's the best advertising you can do. Better than any TV commercial or any. It's one-on-one -on -one with the people. Yeah, right. And not only that, but it, it, you're helping somebody to do things right exactly. and learn learn how to use their weapon correctly exactly. and be safe with it. You can't beat that with a stick. Right. That's a good deal. You know, I had you know, a customer was in there one day, and this guy, it was some little old minor I mean, it took me three minutes to fix it. Mm -hmm. It didn't cost me anything in parts or anything. I fixed it right there on the counter where he brought it in. And so he goes like, you know, well, how much? I, owe you? I said, no, I don't worry about it. Just spread the word. Let folks know we're here. This is when we first opened up, started going. Mm -hmm. And the guy that was working for me, he was like, man, that was 50 bucks you throwed away. I said, it's the best 50 bucks I ever throwed away in oh, my yeah. life. I said, damn right. He's going to tell everybody he knows. 
that I fixed his gun, and he's going to continue to come back. I said, that's the kind of advertising. So I didn't lose no money, trust me. Yeah, yep, that's you for know, sure. And, and that's the way it is. I, I try to do that. I treat everybody the same. I don't care if you got you come in and you're missing your tennis shoes and ain't got no shoes, or if you come in with an Armani suit on. I, I, the prices are still the same. I don't say, he's got money, I'm going to charge him more. Right. That Most of the people I work for, the guns on, I don't even need, see them. Don out front, he's the one that meets them and sees them and, and deals with them. I stay in the back working on guns. Very seldom do I have time to come back out front and, and chat with folks. Every now do I have to, but sure, uh, you know that's just the nature of the beast. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it's generally customers I've had for a long time, and they don't won't deal with anybody else. They don't want to deal with Don. They don't want to deal with nobody else but me, and you know, and I have to take care of them. That's just mm-hmm. the go. way it is. But. Yeah, we, we don't do a lot of advertising other than word of mouth. That's our biggest biggest thing, and okay. it's, it's spread like wildfire in the last nine years. Well, I think a lot of people are going to see this video, and that'll help you too, so yeah. that's good. I hope so. Yeah, Got Grandpa's man, I, old grunt. Bring I, it in. I really appreciate you coming in and especially shedding some light on this new uh, Second Amendment carry, and I think you and Mark had a real good handle on the AR platform yeah. and its history and all that. I didn't know a lot of that stuff. Yep. Every time I do one of these podcasts, I learn something. So I appreciate yeah, both too. of you guys. Yeah. A lot of yeah. people with the AR deal, a lot of people think the AR-10, I mean, the AR-15 was first, and then the AR-10 came after that, and it's just the opposite. Yeah, Armor Light designed, designed a 308 uh, AR-10. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we know today is the AR-10. They designed that. And the, and the Armor Stoner and all, they decided they needed a lighter rifle, and why it went to the AR-15. Hmm. And then they went financial problems, sold out to Colt. Colt made a couple changes. They moved the charging handle to the back as we know it today. Yeah. And forward assist uh, was a, was a military uh, that they asked for. Right. And so then Colt took it and ran with it after that and made yeah. it what it is today. Right. And still holds the patents today. And they still call it the AR Armor Light Rifle. Yeah. So. Cool. There's a well, lot man, of history to that gun. Yeah, there is. Appreciate you again, and uh, yep. it was it was a real good time. And well, Mark, I gotta, I gotta, happy birthday to you. I was going to say, man, thank you so much for the gifts, and no uh, I hope you're not irritated that I gigged you a little bit. <laughs> no, I'm good. It's all in good fun. <laughs> but I noticed that you brought in your notes, and they were written down, and I thought to myself, yeah, that won't happen again. Have you bringing that pad in? <laughs> Have all your notes uh, on that? Yeah. yeah. And I'll bet I can up. enlarge that so I can see it better yeah. and everything. Yeah, huh? It'll look cool. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Really, I appreciate right, it. No and pro- I appreciate you getting up and getting dressed at noon and taking a shower <laughs> and everything so we could shoot this at 1.30. Yeah, that's unusual that's awesome. for me. <laughs> and it was great meeting you. <clears throat> you too. You too. All right, guys. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, do it. Make it happen. So me and Mark are still trying to get up to 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. The only way we can do that is if you subscribe and you get your mama to subscribe too. By the way, tell your mama. Threaten your friends. There you go. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one. We're going to be shooting another couple over the next few days. So uh, look for them, and there you go. Alan, once again, thanks a lot. Absolutely. Looks like we're out. Thanks.